Aloha everybody, Kai Waza with you. Welcome back to my channel and to the final edition, the final installment of my top 20 Exotica records of all time. Now, of course, these are just my personal favorites. You may have a variance of opinion, of course, which you're welcome to, and you're welcome to comment below and say what you think, whether you agree or disagree and why or why not, I welcome it. But this is my opinion, and we're up to the final installment. So records five through one. And I'll just say up front, number one was the runaway winner. I never had to even think about it when I knew I was going to do this, what my absolute all-time favorite Exotica record was. Do you know? Maybe you know. Maybe you don't. You're going to find out. Number five. This is a 1959 release on kind of a budget label called Tops. Voodoo, exotic music from Polynesia in the Far East, number five. Love this record, love every song on it. Uh, it's by Robert Drasnin. Uh, he composed all of the songs on it, all original compositions. Every one of them is great. There's not a song on this record that I don't like. Um, it was also released here, I think, a few years later. This is the same music, just a different uh, cover. I think, you know, what's wrong with this picture? Well, Voodoo, I, I love it so much. I love about this, the outfits and everything. Uh, voodoo is a, you know, West African religion practiced in also in the Americas and the Caribbean by the descendants of slaves it has nothing to do with Polynesia and the Far East. You won't find it in Polynesia and the Far East, but then you also won't find this music in Polynesia or the Far East or in the Americas for that matter. This is weird, exotica. Where is this place? I don't know. It's primitive and, and exotic and beautiful and people are dancing around the fire and I don't know. I love it. It has been reissued on CD. I think it's called Exotic Excursions. And I should say, um, actually Robert Dresden had a material for another album that they never did record. And so much later on, like 2005 or something, I'm not as exactly sure, sure of the date, uh, they did another, they did Voodoo 2 of his compositions. And then they actually did a number three. Now he passed away, I think, before three was done, but he still had material, um, pieces of material and enough for them to put together and finish up uh, and create another album. And both of them are great. Voodoo one, number two, and number three. I highly recommend them all. I love them all. And the, the second and third are just as good as the first. And that doesn't happen very often, I might add, I don't think. Okay, uh, number three, right? We have to, no, we're number four. This is uh, Martin Denny. Okay, is this a Martin Denny album? It might surprise you that of all the Martin Denny albums, the one I would pick here would be Paradise Moods. But the truth is I had this when I was younger. This was one of my earlier introductions. It's on Sunset, which is a kind of reissue budget label of Liberty Records, which is who he recorded with. And it's a compilation. They don't say it is, and I didn't know it was at the time when I bought it, but it just so happens that the songs they chose to put on this compilation are some of my favorite Martin Denny songs. They're just, I love the arrangements of them on Temptation, Blue Paradise, Jungle Madness. So I come to this, back to this record easily. Love this record, it's number four for me. Number four, Paradise Moods. Uh, before we go any further, let me quickly tell you I have a contest going on. I'd love for you to enter it. Uh, I am giving away a box of about a dozen of these beautiful artificial lays that we get here in the islands. I think they would be, they're all ribbon, they're all artificial. So ribbon um, and yarn and artificial flowers and whatever, different things, kukui nuts like this one. Assorted, I'm giving away a uh, box of a dozen. They're wonderful, I think, uh, for 
if you ever have a, a luau or a cock tiki, you know, cocktail gathering, they'd be wonderful to give to your guests for them to take home. Um, they're also wonderful to wear yourself with your own wear, and they're great to decorate. And they're wonderful to like put on, um, drape around a painting on the side of a painting or around lampshades or drape on this and that. I love them. It doesn't matter where in the world you live. I don't care. I'll ship it to any country. It doesn't matter. Um, all you have to do is enter, and but you must follow the rules, which is that you have to send your entry to Hawaiian Hi-Fi Radio at yahoo.com. And you tell me who your favorite uh, exotic art album is or artist or song or whatever. Uh, if you don't know enough about Exotica to have a favorite, just say, I don't know, but I want to enter the lay drawing. That's fine. And I'll put everybody's names in a tiki bowl and draw out the winner and a second place. So first place will get about a dozen, second place will get uh, about six, half a dozen. So once again, just send your entry at Hawaiian Hi-Fi Radio at yahoo.com and uh, that info or that address will be given down below in the description as well. So please, I'm going to do this until, keep it open until about Valentine's Day and then Valentine's Day or after whatever video I do, I'll draw the winner out there. So, um, yeah, they're, I think they're fun. They're a lot of fun, you know, those things. And they're artificial, so they last forever. I wear them all the time. Um, okay, my number three favorite Exotica record. Which one is it? It is the Milt Raskin Group and Exotic Sounds of Hawaii. <laughs> I got this one when I was quite young and played it so much, looking out of the window at the willow tree, imagining it was an island in the ocean and the palm trees were swaying. Seriously, I just I used to listen to this record a lot. Uh, also, when my parents would go fishing, I didn't like to fish, but I would go downstream or away from where they were so I wouldn't bother to fish and I would, you know, make little lagoons and plant little weeds around it and pretend that they were like palm trees. <laughs> make little villages out of rocks and hotels and stuff. This album at that particular time um, was very much in my head a lot um, when I would be doing that. So this isn't the original issue of it, but this is the one I know it as. You may know it as uh, one of the other ones. I do have the older one, Kapu. It's originally from 1959, the album, meaning forbidden. I love this one because of all the clip art on the back. That's really cool also. And it says here, Milt Raskin was a, a jazz, kind of a jazz artist, a, a pianist, composer, and arranger. You're not going to see a lot with his name on it. I mean, this and a couple of other things are the only projects that really bear his name. And he did a lot of studio work that was uncredited. But it says here that Mr. Raskin exhaustively researched the legends and musical traditions of Hawaii and then wrote modern descriptive compositions to fit the exotic mood of each legend. Yeah, I don't know about that, but it's cool. I love the album. I particularly love the song that I used to actually hate when I was a kid called Lani Kai. I hated it. It sounded like some Egyptian tomb burial music. It was weird. Now I love it. It's like my favorite track from this album. It was also released as Exotic Percussion by Crown, and there's a European release of it on some European budget label I've never seen in person, where it's called Tahiti. I would kind of like to drag, catch that one down, although not pay a lot for it, which is unlikely. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was number three, folks. We are getting there. Number two. Number two. Here's another artist now that doesn't get a lot of credit. Uh, this is by Mr. Phil Moore, who um, was, uh, this album is also, I should say, from 1959, a very pivotal year for budget label Exotica Records, apparently. Um, this is on Strand, kind of a budgety label. It's called Polynesian Paradise. <laughs> A lot of 
really, I love this album. Um, a lot of, it's orchestral. It's pretty dark. A lot of dark arrangements on it. It has one of the darkest arrangements of Blue Hawaii I've ever heard. And I'm, I am there for it. I'm loving it. There's bird calls, there's oceans on this record. And again, a lot of the songs, several original composition, uh, Pearls of Parrot Palmyra, actually on the label, Maiden Island, um, really nice version of Trade Winds and Return to Paradise. This is, a, I love this album. It's just so moody and dark and sort of, it's like a beautiful paradise, but it's kind of foreboding. Highly recommend this record. This was released on CD from Japan at some point. I do have it on a CD. Uh, Phil Moore, yeah. Not a lot of credits on him. Do you want to hear more of these Exotica records? Tune in to Hawaiian Hi-Fi Radio on Live365.com as we begin a special feature each hour playing a selection from one of the top 20 Exotica albums of all time on Kaiwaza's Countdown. The link is below in the description. The top 20 Exotica albums. <laughs> all right, number one, we're up to number one. What is it? What could it be? Do you have any idea? Is it Martin Denny? Is it Les Baxter? No, it isn't. And this was such an easy decision. This is absolutely easily, on the music alone, number one Exotica album of all time for me. It's called Exotic Island and it's by The Surfman. I will say I know this album really not this was not my first exposure my first exposure was this this is the same album reissued this came out in uh, 19 1961 or something then this came out okay yeah 1960 this reissue came out in 67 and uh, this is the one I had and I had it because it's called Trade Winds Romance from Hawaii to Tahiti by the Sassy Serenaders. I had it because my grandfather bought it and hated it, and he gave it to me, which he would do with cast off or duplicates or whatever. He's like, I don't like this record. I think it's amazing. Just musically, the most beautiful arrangements, kind of jazz, it's very cool. Um, they're one of the few artists who ever took Quiet Village and actually did something very different with it. it it's not like, usually it's pretty close to the original. There's this completely different. Wordless female, birds, oceans. There's a little steel guitar on it. This album has everything. And I have never ever stopped playing this record. I go back to it over and over and over again. I think it's magnificent. I love it. Trade Winds Romance from Hawaii to Tahiti by the South Sea Serenaders, otherwise known as Exotic Night by the Surfman. For me, it's an easy number one. Easy. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Leave comments. I'd love to hear from you below. And don't forget to enter the lay drawing because you want these lays, okay? So enter, enter, enter.